Hi, welcome to the Sphere Day, which is on the uh, 19th of January or on Sunday. We're just going to be looking at the New Zealand dollar today against three other currencies. We're going to be looking at NZD, USD, NZD, JPY, and finally GBP, NZD. In the coming week, we are looking for the Kiwi to sell off. And we think all three trades look really good risk to reward opportunities. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to go and take a look at the trade setups. But just before we do so, please do keep in mind, it is my view. As of this specific moment in time, it can, of course, change in line with the market action and conditions. If you want all our trading techniques, our daily technical sentiment analysis of 14 Forex pairs, you can click on the link beneath this video and you will get live access to our member centre. Right. The pair we're going to look at first is uh, NZD. USD. All right, NZD USD daily chart. And in terms of this chart, what's very important is uh, what happened down here below the 63 level. You can see I've marked in uh, speculators build up a record net short position. Speculators just too bearish and they get taken out on stop. And as we get up to 67, they're all out on stop. How do we know this? We can just look at the COT net traders positions and, and see that happening. Now, if you're new to our videos, don't COT net traders positions are. Uh, it's a, a great tool for seeing where actual big money is positioned in the markets. And down here, like I said, speculators, biggest net short position um, ever. And the commercials, the smart money, biggest net long position. So a short covering rally with speculators taken out on stop. They're all out now. Okay. Now, in terms of the uh, NZD also got a little bit of traction to the upside due to that US China trade uh, deal phase one. Yeah, we were saying in recent videos we thought it would be a disappointment, but the Kiwi rallied up into it, as did all risk currencies. It was a disappointment, really. It doesn't really settle a difference between the US and China or make minimal difference to global growth or trade, uh, which is slowing, um, which will hurt the NZD. Uh, China is really the big trading partner for the Kiwi, or, or New Zealand, sorry. Um, China's really slowing up pretty quickly. You see that in the data. Yes, the world's biggest commodity consumer takes a lot of produce from New Zealand. Uh, we think commodity prices will be going down longer term. Um, and exports will contract, okay? Now, in terms of interest rates, very interesting. The market sees no more cuts expected this year or next year. So the Royal Bank of New Zealand going to remain on hold. That's in the price. I personally do not think they're going to hold rates uh, till next year. I think they'll cut within a few months. You know, uh, New Zealand very um, sensitive to global growth, which is slowing in China. So I think they will probably cut. But even if they don't, it's in the price. USD has a yield advantage on the interest rate. Um, also, US economy, in our view, doing better than New Zealand. And you've got possible risk off now. Now, in terms of risk on, which we've had into the phase one China trade deal, it's still there. Um, the risk currencies should do well on the USD. Uh, but USD's kind of pushed the NZD down a bit. I think stock markets are too frothy, we'll get correction, that'll help the USD as well. So the big fundamentals for us favour the USD, this rally here. It's got rid of the big speculative net short position. I think the big fundamentals are going to come back into play. And the Kiwi is going to be going lower. Now, in terms of this chart, it's pretty simple the way you can play this trade. Um, if I just go there, that's a round number. So we've got 67. Round numbers, always a lot of turbulence around them. Uh, big order flow. We get back up, I think you could sell the Kiwi on weakness off the level. Your stop wants to be behind those candles there. I've got ours at 67 and 60. We're already in this one, okay, on the break of 67. I think for fresh positions, you can sell back to 67 or take a break lower. So if I just do that, a trajectory, 
Prices have come down a bit already. They've gone through the 20 day moving average. A little bit of a fight to get above the 20 day moving average on the last two candles. It looks like we're failing. Okay. Where could you come in if you were bearish? There. Another round number. So sell through that round number, that tail. And the target would be here initially. And then a run on down to 60. Now, in terms of the trade, it would give about 3 to 1 to first target. But I think if we break through this level, we should see volatility pick up to the downside. The stock can be trailed down. Obviously, if we rally up to 67, you come off that level, you get better risk to reward. So for us, um, yeah, going down and uh, rallies, selling opportunities, just sell rallies or sell breaks lower. Uh, looks a decent risk to reward trade and so do the next two Kiwi shorts. Um, we're going to do NZD JPY next. All right, you, uh, sorry, NZD JPY, nice big strong move up, bit of a correction, trying to get higher and was failing to on Friday. Now, in terms of um, JPY fundamentals, let's just go through them very quickly. The JPY weakened into the phase one China US trade deal. It's the number one safe haven. There was a lot of optimism about the deals. We said it was a disappointment. It's not going to make any difference to global growth or trade, and it's not going to weaken the yen. It's past um, markets going to focus, I think, now on the Bank of Japan, which comes up on Tuesday. Market thinks Bank of Japan is going to be pretty cautious, pretty dovish, hint at more stimulus rate cuts in the months going forward. It won't, in our view. I think the Bank of Japan, if there as is, it's going to make no difference in terms of weakening the yen. It's in the price. But if they're a little bit more optimistic, a little bit more hawkish, then that could firm the yen. And they've got good reason to be. And the market isn't really focusing on this. The Bank of Japan asked for a fiscal stimulus package by the government in the economy to boost growth. Uh, which have got a massive stimulus package um, coming in to build infrastructure. It will boost GDP and it will allow the Bank of Japan to stay on hold with interest rates, not cut them more negative and not add to stimulus. The Bank of Japan do not want to do it. The market still thinks they might. They won't, in our view. That's why they asked for the fiscal stimulus package. Now they've got it, they can remain on hold and eventually um, the stimulus package will start to wind down. So the Bank of Japan, a little bit more hawkish uh, or optimistic on Tuesday. That could give the yen a bit of a boost. But uh, you know, risk on or risk off, the yen is going up. We still got risk on in the market, stock markets at multi-year highs, but it's just not going to weaken the yen anymore. The yen is just too oversold. Um, if we do get risk off though, then that would give the yen an additional boost. We know it's number one safe haven currency. It'll go up everywhere. But uh, yeah, we're looking for a good move to the downside. Now you can see obviously the nice move up, down, traders buy the dip in anticipation of US-China trade deal. It's a disappointment. Can't get out or above these candle tails here. And on Friday, you got a negative close. Now, in terms of levels, Really, we just use round numbers on this one. Sorry, let me just get my line in. Okay, so we can see obviously this level here taken out briefly. Just trying to get away from the 73 level, can't do it. Another go, but these tails are not getting to those tails, and we're red on Friday. So basically, this tail not quite to that tail, and we close back below the round number okay where would you come in if you wanted to come in short i'd go through this body here the close that's going to get you clear of the round number okay we're at 72 78 so it's still pretty close so i wait for it to get away from the round number through um 72 50 and then see if she runs where could we go to I think we're going to 69. That would be my first target, possibly longer term. Get down to 67. But even to first target, it's a nice risk to reward because you just need to be back clear of those tails there. Okay. 
So for us, yeah, maybe we could see one more flick up, but I, I just don't see sustained strength in NZD JPY. If you're coming in fresh, just sell a break of support, see if she runs. And I think the N is you know, pretty oversold across the board. It's due a, a nice move in our view. Um, and the price action to us looks like we're just about to confirm a big move. So look to sell a break of support in our view. Um, now let's go to our last pair, which is going to be GBP NZD. Right, on GBP NZD daily chart, and uh, in terms of the fundamentals for the British pound, um, markets pricing in over a 70% chance of a Bank of England rate cut this month. Um, I personally don't think it's a done deal, but if it is, it's, it's getting priced in. It actually might be more than 70% now. I checked that uh, data on Thursday. Um, so Bank of England rate cut pretty well priced in. Um, but yeah, I just don't think they're going to cut. If they don't cut, that's going to give the pound a good boost. Okay, why don't I think they'll cut? Well, yeah, the rate cut speculation all started with GDP was poor to the end of November. Terrible GDP. Who cares? It was to the end of November. There was Brexit uncertainty around. Businesses were holding back on spending. That should be pretty obvious that, yeah, business was stalling. Now, we've had the election. Brexit uncertainty removed, and um, the GDP going forward will improve. Inflation and retail sales lot was made of those figures recently, but again, they're for December, they're partially impacted by election uncertainty. Okay, now if you look at data after the election, you can see business confidence really moved up strongly. Okay, so business spending will increase. Okay, in terms of the consumer. Look at what happened to house prices at the back end of December. And also, sorry, house sales. Numerous um, house sales. I can't remember the exact increase now, but it was well above forecast. Yeah, people waited until after the election result. Okay, so the business confidence, consumer confidence will come back. Um, the data will improve going forward. I think the Bank of England could remain on hold. They've actually said if things get worse, then they will need to act. Um, are they going to get worse? I don't think so. Anyway, Bank of rate, uh, England rate cut in the price. I personally think they're going to hold when the meeting comes up. Bad news is in the price, but green shoots are in the data. Jordan Rochester and Mora, he's totally right. There are green shoots within the data, which just pointed out. And also I could point out um, the balance of trade it was pretty good. Okay, despite Brexit uncertainty, which is bullish going forward. Also, another bullish point, fiscal stimulus is coming from the government. They're going to be spending in the economy, infrastructure, etc. That boosts growth and boost inflation, a big positive. Okay, also you've got the GDP deeply oversold. You know, it's got to retrace the whole Brexit decline in our view to get back to fair value. And that target is not even on this chart. It's 215, so off the top of the chart. But let's look at the price action. You've got a key level of support, in my view, which is here, which is a round number, 195. Would you just briefly get through it? But push away, come back when the data's poor, even to test it on this blue. The poor data is mostly in the last couple of weeks, of course. And we push up, we don't even get to the level. Um, so my view is, okay, if the pound comes back to this level, just by strength, but if we don't come back to the level, draw trajectory. I personally think it's good support on those two bodies as well. So you've got two levels of support. This one here, just really above that 20 day moving average. We're red on Friday. Where would I buy if I was bullish of sterling? Sorry, I'm in the lining. Back through that open, 167.20. Just get above the round number, clear of that open, and see if she runs. The volatility has dropped, points to a big move, okay? Uh, I think it's going to be the upside. And, you know, in the period of the poor data and, you know, the market's pricing, 70% chance of the VOE cutting rates. You've not really seen the pound go down, are you? It's holding up pretty well. Get back through there. 
there's your first target, second target of the top at 250. Lot of upside in the British pound, the Kiwi overbought. On a breakout, keep the stop behind this level, clear of the round number, 194.60. But if we gravitate up quite nicely, you can pull the stop up behind here. So you've got um, near enough of three to one or three to one, if my eyes don't deceive me, to first target, a lot more to second target, obviously. That risk reward will come better if you can get the stop up. I've got a feeling it could gravitate up pretty quickly. Like I said, yeah, we may come back to test support, but just key off the level on strength. Just don't see us going significantly below the 195 level. So pound, buy on dips or buy on strength. Long way to go to the upside. I'm going to retrace the whole Brexit decline. So there we are. Three NZD pairs that I think look really attractive. I'm just doing them all as one trade, dividing my risk between three. I might wait one more than the other as we move forward, but that's the way I'm going to do it at the moment. I like... Uh, the look of the Kiwi for weakness. Right, have I covered everything I need to? Yes, I have. That is the video for today. Thank you very much for watching me as usual. Take care and have a good day.